Hi, I'm Rob Howard from EFL Talks and owner of Online Language Center. And I'm here today to talk about WebAkit and WebAnots. It's the do's and don'ts of online. The reason that I made this is we found that with all the EFL Talk webinars, many speakers who are great experts and great professional speakers really have a lot of problems when it comes to doing a webinar and what we've noticed is a lot of mistakes something very simple and basic and things that can be easily fixed and also a lot of you could be new or future online teachers and these are things that you have to keep in mind and do and invest in for the future so what we're going to talk about is your system today First of all, first thing to do, no matter what you're using for a computer, update your browser. Whether it be Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, Google Chrome, whatever it is, make sure that you have the latest update and everything is up to date for all your browsers. Next thing, with a lot of PCs, and um, I believe sometimes on Mac, Make sure that you have the latest version of Adobe and also Java. This will be very important if you're using some of the other uh, online systems available. Close all your programs. Skype, Facebook, they both have their own element of using chat with the camera. And sometimes these can interfere when you're working with any kind of online. Of course, if Netflix and NFL or Playboy Channel is on, this is using up important bandwidth and this is gonna slow down the program and the transmission. Clean up your computer. Get rid of all the junk in there. Clean out your memory. One important thing that we found is you must clear out your cache. And this is something new due to the amount of information that we're trying to send and receive over the internet. So a lot of people don't know how to do it. A very easy program that you can download for free is CCleaner, and this will clean out your cache on all of your browsers and clean out any of the apps that have been running. There's also a paid for version which does more, but I use the free version and it works fine. When all else fails, before you do either a webinar or any webathon, just reboot your system. This will help to clear out a lot of the memory, too. Now, if you have an old dilapidated computer system, think about making an upgrade. Maybe it's time to replace everything. Also, maintain and make sure you make the latest upgrades to your system. and simple things like the video board make sure that everything is running and can run the newer software available now here's a little comparison uh, i took the example of a teacher that we had who had a slow system and students were complaining about the quality of the video and the audio and how there were a lot of lockup problems and they were really kind of tired of this and didn't want to study with this particular teacher anymore because of it. Now, if you figure that this teacher was making a thousand dollars a month income over a two year period for the contract and all he had to do was upgrade the video board in his computer, which cost about $150 one time. When you make this comparison, you'll see it's really not a bad idea to make an upgrade to keep your job. Now, also, if you can, run a backup system. I always have a backup computer right next to mine, just in case something goes wrong. Inevitably, there will be problems with technology, uh, maybe problems with filling up too much memory, and always having a backup system is good if you can afford to. Always have a plan B. That's my point. Now, as far as the sound quality, 
if the students can't hear you and are having trouble, then this is a problem. If the viewers are having trouble hearing you, whether it be from static or low volume, this is a major problem that needs to be fixed. If you're using big clunky headphones, you know, you're not a DJ, you're a teacher or you're a speaker, try and get something smaller. Now, uh, headphones, I use two types of headphones, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, these right here, you'll notice, these are the earbuds that come with every cell phone. And I use this on systems like laptops. You can use this with your smartphone. You can use this with your tablet, of course. Most people don't realize that you can use the same headphones on a laptop. Uh, these are comfortable if you're doing anything for a long period of time, and I enjoy them. But the mic quality isn't quite as good. Now, these can cost $10, $15, and I always keep an extra set on hand. Uh, the other type I'm using right here. This is a behind-the-ear system that I just picked up. And these only cost about $20 and gives a good quality sound. Now, the other type, you can go into getting into separate headphones, separate microphones, and spend a lot of money. And a lot of people have talked about this. And, you know, if it's worth it for you, make the investment. One thing I think you should stay away from, the style of mic that you're using, if it's there, right on the same plane, meaning the same desk or same table as your keyboard, every time you type, you're going to hear what I call keyboard clunk. And this is when you hear this noise all the time when people are typing. Make sure that if you're going to use a stand-up mic like this, See if you can put it on a boom, like you would if you were a musician, or put it on a different surface, maybe a little shelf next to you, and try and keep it on a separate surface, or put the keyboard or the microphone maybe dampened on a towel or a small pillow so you can dampen this noise. The other thing, remove distractions. Fans are very nice because you're sitting there, and it can get hot. But keep in mind, every time one of these oscillating fans come by, either your hair is going to be blowing or you're going to get the whoosh. It sounds like the tide coming in and out. So make sure you remove any distraction. Let's talk a little bit about what people are seeing. Now, if you have an old blurry camera or it's dirty or it's out of focus, this is what people are going to see. Not very interesting. Proper illumination is very important too, and you don't want too dark so people can't see anything or your face. Turn on a light if you can. Take a couple of um, floor lamps or even a desk lamp and aim them towards your face to illuminate yourself. Now you can always get into professional lighting Again, depends on what you want to invest. But be very aware of what's in the background. Most people don't realize that with an open background like this, with the sun blaring in, nobody sees you from the front. So all you're going to see is a silhouette. So be very aware of what's going on behind you. Here's my background right here. If you notice, I have a window right behind me and the sun comes in all day long. So you would either be blinded by the light. You've noticed what I put in is a black blind. And I also have, uh, for very sunny days, I have a um, curtain, which is a blackout curtain and will also act as a backdrop. So even just a simple set of blinds will help out. Now, do you have a messy room? Clean it up. I've seen some very interesting uh, webinars given by people, and I actually saw this in the background, an open closet, unmade bed, and these were from professional speakers. 
organize your space, clean up the area, and you don't want to mess like this. Remember, uh, you're showing you here. Now, I put a few examples here from one of our EFL Talks webinars. And if you notice at the top, uh, Marjorie and Nellie, both teachers, and you notice all the books in the background. This is great having books in the background because I really feel like I'm listening to a teacher. So this is one thing to consider. You'll notice at the bottom here, Gavin, um, I feel like I'm talking with somebody professional. He's here in an office. It looks very much like a clean office environment. And it makes me feel um, much more comfortable. You'll notice mine, I tend to show just a black background. What this will do is it focuses everything on me. And Shelly Terrell, well, she's famous. She can have any background she wants. Okay. My view happens to be this. And if you look out the window, you would see this. The only problem is you only get this view 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So I would have to do everything at sunrise to get this kind of view. So some people really want to take advantage of a view, but you have to keep in mind, if the lighting isn't good, forget the view. Wear clothing. This is very important. <laughs> and just to be even, the women out there will complain. This is a picture of me. I wish. But be aware of what you're wearing for clothing. Whether you're doing a class, whether you're doing something professional, uh, dress for what it is. Use the appropriate dress code. If you're dealing with business people and executives, possibly a suit and tie, maybe just a shirt and a tie. Um, I'm dealing mostly with students, so I tend to wear more casual, uh, business casual clothing. But be very aware of what you're wearing. Now, internet connection. Let's talk a little bit about this. If you have slow internet, you really need to do something about it. Remember, doing a good webinar or any kind of webathon, talking online, the slower your internet, the worse uh, experience your listeners and viewers are going to have. Now, one thing you can do is if you're working over Wi-Fi, directly connect into the back of the modem. This computer that I have here, even though I have Wi-Fi throughout the area here, I've got this directly plugged in. This will give a faster connection in most cases than Wi-Fi. It'll also clean up any distractions and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Now, a lot of people use these cellular internet modems they tend to be much slower. And I really don't recommend this unless it's your only choice. Now, I've had people have given webinars using these modems because they were traveling. In fact, uh, my friend Gabby gave one from an airport using this. Fortunately, it did well. She had a good connection. Usually, the connections are too weak and you'll have problems. So really try and stay away from this. Maybe find an alternative location to do the webathon or webinar from. Now, make a comparison about your internet. Here in Brazil, uh, normally you get 10 to 15 mega for a standard connection. Now, the problem in Brazil is by law, the internet companies only have to provide 10% of what you pay for. So at any given time, I could have only one to one and a half mega of internet. And what this will do is the classes are terrible because the system locks up. You'll have the freezing that usually takes place with slow internet connection. So what you have to take a look at is what will it cost you to upgrade your internet? 
here you, I've converted this into dollars, but let's say if you charge $50 per hour for a class, and this is your income, to upgrade from 10 or 15 mega to 30 mega here in Brazil only costs 750 a month. So you can see that the payoff is really worth it. Make this comparison and investment. I have since invested in 60 mega, so I'm paying about $15 more per month. But again, I'm online all the time, so it was well worth it. And I very rarely have any internet problems here. Now, we're always going to have problems with technology. Remember, what we're looking at here is you're working with a lot of different um, browsers. You're working with different configurations of computers. You're working with smartphones, tablets, PCs, laptops, Macs. And now you're adding into it the technology of some kind of platform. All these things are constantly changing. And if, let's say, WizIQ makes a change in their program, they have to make sure that this will work with Chrome, with Mozilla, with the latest Java, with the latest Adobe, and so on. So we're always going to have problems with technology because there's so many people involved, and we have to be ready for it. Now let's talk a little bit about the space. I have a very small space here. Um, this is actually my little corner office that I built, and you can see I'm confined in a small area, but it doesn't really seem that way. So take a look at what your space is, organize your space, and see what you can do to adjust it so you give off a, a very good uh, class and you get a good impression. Remove any distractions. If you have a dog, send somebody out with the dogs. If you have a bird, kill it. If you have a cat, get it out of there. There's nothing worse than running something and the dog starts barking, the cat crawls across the keyboard, the bird starts squawking, and this is distracting to listeners. So do whatever you can do to get these distractions far away. If you have kids, lock them up. Uh, pay somebody to take them to the park. Uh, really, you're doing something professional here, and there's no need for kids to be walking in and out of your webinar. Now, other interruptions that you may not be aware about is in some cases, I had this in an old apartment, that a microwave is actually on the same frequencies as some Wi-Fi. And when you run the microwave while you're trying to use the internet, it'll actually block. <clears throat> so make sure nobody's making any hot pockets or heating up some coffee in the microwave. Maybe unplug it. Now, another thing is whiteboard interrogation. Now, people really don't think about this when they're dealing with a platform that has a whiteboard. And what happens is, when I show you a blank screen like this, actually the light is shining right into my face. And staring at this for a while is very annoying. Okay? So be aware of the background. What I like to do is I always put my own background on every class. So if I'm not using the whiteboard at the time, I've got something there at least that people can either look at or is not blaring in my face. And for those of you who have a company, it's also a great opportunity to advertise and get your name out there. Now, the platform. First of all, the first thing I do is when I'm going to set up either a webinar or even a face-to-face, -face, uh, online face-to-face -face class or a group class, I send out a little orientation message. 
not only do I send a link or how to connect in when the class is scheduled, but what I do is I send them detailed instructions included right in the email. So there shouldn't be any surprises. 50% of the people will read this and know that they have to have a camera, headphones and a microphone, make sure they've updated all their computer and make sure that they don't have problems with a firewall or if they're at work, check with IT to make sure they're not blocked. So this way you have no surprises. Make this up and send this to everybody. It also is much more professional. Now, know the platform that you're going to be working with. There's a lot of platforms out there these days. Of course, a lot of people know Adobe. Um, I happen to work with WizIQ, this Blackboard Zoom Big Marker, and I've used most of these. And depending on who you're asked to present for, you may be asked to present using their own platform. For example, when I do some for one group, I use Google Hangouts. Another group uses Big Marker. Another group uses Adobe Connect. And I use WizIQ. So you have to know the platform because each one of these platforms works differently and has its own idiosyncrasies. The best thing you can do is go in and ask to have a sample class and have them set up a practice class for you so you can upload your information, make sure it works, see how it looks, and practice going through and controlling the room so you don't have any surprises when the time comes. Because there's not always a guarantee that somebody who's going to be there when you're giving the webinar or webathon will know what they're doing. And without support, you have a captive audience with nothing to show. Now, with doing that, you also need to find out what is the best format for your presentation to be in. Some of these systems have the ability to use PowerPoint. Some have to be uh, uploaded in PDF form. Some you can use photos and upload photos. Some you can use video. Some you can put a direct link to YouTube. And most don't have the ability to properly run Prezi. So if you're using Prezi, you may not be able to use it on the platform. And again, you won't be able to show your presentation. Now, know the options. I've been working with WizIQ for almost four years now. So I know that there's many different options that I can use. For example, if I'm going to have a class with five people and myself, if I'm not using the whiteboard, I know I can set this up where the other viewers will all be right here. We only have two viewers here. So I have different views that I can use, such as this. I could put them at the bottom. I could take them out altogether and make the focus on me. If I'm doing a one-to-one -one class, I could do a split screen like this, almost like Skype. Or I can actually have them overlap. Okay, so know the options that you can use with the platform that you're going to be presenting with. Now, this is just the standard. I tend to use this when I'm giving a webinar because the focus that I usually want is I want the focus on the screen, like you're looking at now, and I want the chat room available so people can interact during the presentation. <clears throat> so the biggest thing is you need to keep in mind and make an investment in your future. and invest in your presence. Remember, this is your presence. You really need to do the math and sit down and figure this out. Now, just to give you a few ideas, I got an upgraded system. This idea center is actually the system that I have right here. And 
before I was working with two 13 inch laptops and giving classes, giving webinars all the time and working on the computer probably 60 hours a week here, you know, I found that this is difficult with a 13 inch screen. So in this case, what I did is invested in a touch screen with a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard because I spend so much at the computer. And basically all this cost me was 20 hours of classes. And when you figure that's half a week's work in one year, you know, the payoff is well worth it. Remember for upgrading the internet, you're talking 20 minutes of one class per month. For better headphones, a standby set of headphones in case you have a problem with the wires breaking. 20 minutes of one class. That's it. And I really recommend that you keep a spare pair on hand just because these are very flimsy and things always break. If something were to break, it's very easy to say 30 seconds and switch over to another set. Okay. Now. A backup system, consider how much it's going to cost you to buy a secondary system. And considering the amount of income that you have coming in, it's well worth it. Invest in yourself. This is my perfect chair, which I hope to find in the future. Something comfortable, something that I can sit there for 60 hours. But invest in yourself. Make the investment on what you're doing. Uh, like I said, I upgraded my system, but one of the important things I found when I spent more time online is you'll notice over here, I used to have this small secretary type chair. And after sitting in this for 12 hours a day, it gets extremely uncomfortable. So for less than $200, I made an upgrade to get a much more comfortable chair. And now I can work more comfortably. I don't have the back problems that I used to have. Now, some other things. Let's talk about some miscellaneous. Remember, reduce the PowerPoint content. When you're giving anything, you don't want people focusing on trying to read this and ignoring you while you're speaking. The focus should be on you. Remember, you saw here just a few words, just a few pictures to drive the point home that I was trying to make. And amazingly, I still see this all the time from very professional speakers. Yes, this looks wonderful, but who can read it? You know, I'm going to have to download this and this will take me, what, five minutes probably to read through everything. And please, when you're giving any kind of uh, webinar or web event, don't sit there and read this page. People can do that themselves. And this is why I feel that people are starting to less and less go to webinars. Now, another thing that you need to do is reduce the actual size of the PowerPoint. Now, how many times have you given either a webinar or a class only to see this loading, loading, loading? Please wait. Well, there's a little trick that a lot of people don't know is if you go in early and make sure that you upload your presentation, go through the presentation slide by slide. This puts everything into memory. And then when you go back and make the actual presentation, It'll go much faster, but there's other things that you can do. For example, now this is the time consuming one. And if you're doing a short presentation, this will work well. First of all, remove any of the fade in, fade out, transition, slide in, remove any animation, remove any video, remove anything that's extraneous and make your PowerPoint presentation like you normally would and use in a face-to-face -face classroom. Now, open a new PowerPoint. 
go to each slide and do a print screen on each slide. And then you copy and paste the screen into the new PowerPoint. You'll probably have to crop a little bit and then you save the new copy. What this does is it's actually saving the entire page as one picture. So it's not loading the background, the text box, the text, and each part of the text or each picture separately. It's loading the entire page as one picture and it goes much faster. And it actually reduces the size, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, there's another way if you're using PowerPoint picture, uh, PowerPoint on your program, and I believe you can do this also on a Mac. I'm not a Mac user, so I'm not sure. Normally, when you're saving your PowerPoint, you'll notice that most people will save it as a PowerPoint presentation. But if you scroll down in this Save As tool, you're going to see down here PowerPoint Picture Presentation. Now this will do exactly what I just did manually by copying and pasting, and it will save everything as just a picture file. Now you'll lose a little bit of clarity and a little bit of quality, but not very much. And unless you're showing this on a huge screen, people won't even notice. Now what this did, this particular presentation, the full presentation was 23.8. And this has been reduced now by using this method to 8.3 mega. So it's 65% smaller and faster. But make sure you remove all those animations, transitions, and sounds. People have been saying in research shows, most people find it annoying these days anyway, because people have overdone bouncing and sliding, fading in and fading out. Now, take the ultimate selfie. Go to one of these platforms or on any computer these days, usually there's a record feature that you can record your own video using the webcam. Record yourself speaking and then take a look at yourself and watch and see exactly what other people are seeing. Is there a problem with the background? Am I too close? Am I too far? Am I moving around too much? <coughs> Excuse me. So take a look at yourself and critique yourself because remember this is going to be the point of view that your viewers are seeing. Most of all be yourself. Here I am. Now I used to be in business so of course I was a suit and tie and if I was doing a regular class or something like this informally for me I'm not a suit and tie guy anymore. I like to be comfortable. This is who I am and I want to be myself. Don't try and fake it. It'll come across as fake. Personality. Now, a lot of people tend to freeze when they get in front of the camera and do a webinar or they're talking to a lot of people. And what will happen, this will come across in your webinar. When I first started giving webinars, I was really boring because I thought I should sit still and be professional. And I'm crazy. I like to have fun. So show your personality. Okay. Give yourself. Don't try and be somebody you're not. And have fun with it. Remember, this is your image and it's your reputation. And if you're doing this in order to make money, it's your future. So really think about what it is you're doing. Have fun. You know, be yourself. Be crazy. Uh, the days of the slow, boring webinar, we're not capturing people's attention anymore. So have fun with it. And best of all, smile. So thank you. I appreciate you listening. 
And if you need more information, would like to talk about it, need some advice, you can reach me here. Uh, of course, I'm on Facebook. I'm on SlideShare. And we hope that you'll join us at EFL Talks, Talks for Teachers. If you have questions, you can email me. And if you go to our site, you can register and find out about any of our upcoming webinars. But I hope with this you get better quality webinars, better quality classes, and you can do it for a very small investment. So good luck and thanks.